Hello, everyone. Hello. And welcome to the Reconstructing History podcast and vlog. My name is Bob, and that... Is Cass? Yeah, like that. Is that where I am? No, let's do that again. No, I think I'm on that side. Are you? Usually I'm on that side. Oh. Yeah. Technology is fun, kids. We could cut this, but we probably won't. <laughs> nah, I'm I'm tired. What? How's things in the Netherlands? Um, as you say this, the rain has just started sheeting down. We just had some. You could probably hear the trees. Wow. I think there might be some sleet. Oh my goodness. Um, there's thunder and lightning. Yeah, we're having a thing. So much for your walk it's today. Exciting. What's that? So much for your walk today. Yeah, my walk, my walk really didn't happen, and uh, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> you don't want to be out in this. No, this is it's doing a thing. It is doing a thing, and it's like throwing buckets. It's like being in a car wash. Oh my goodness! It's just slapping up against the windows and and stuff. You have to so. find a nice break in it to get Flash out to do his business later. <laughs> Good he luck with go that, huh? He could go out by himself. I'll just shove on his butt. Nice. Let him out through the, the big the big doors, the big glass doors behind his bed. You can stand on, on the patio under the overhang. Yeah. But Seriously. it's it's sunshine here, but colder than it has been. It was up towards seventy the last few days. But today is clear and sunny, but cooler, so it's a thing. Wow, that is, I can't tell if it's raining that, no, that's sleep. Oh, jeez. It's actually, because it's, it's skittering across the patio. Eek. Yeah. Eek. It, it's not that cold, it's just that violent. Yeah. That it's, Remember that time we went walking out in the woods, and we were afraid it was going to rain, and it was cold cold enough that we were wearing our heavy jackets and everything and then it yeah and it started that pea-sized hail yeah it's it's sleet it hailed and i had hail all along my the, the fur trim on my jacket i have yeah. pictures of it that was actually a year ago it came up in my my photo memories one year ago this week oh no kidding and, uh, yeah that's 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 uh March in the Netherlands, apparently. It, Splice it a picture in at this it. point in the video. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put in the picture of my, my coat with the sleet on it. Because I was thinking it was but, just rain, and then it started bouncing off the brim of my hat, and it was deafening. <laughs> yeah, and the funny thing is, it usually the temperature goes up when that happens. Um, it's not cold, but it's very violent. And, and flashes, flashes up. He has, he's had to turn around in a circle. He has had to turn three times clockwise again. Oh, well. Clearly because, you've done something wrong. Well, I, I let the storm happen, so oh, there we go. It's disturbing him. Oh, my goodness. So you've been having fun with your new software training. Oh, I tell you what. I'm sitting here. It's, it's, it's amazing that I'm sitting up straight because my back is so sore from, you know, I mean, a normal day, I do some computer stuff, and then I fold patterns, and then I do the shipping, and it's all this moving around. But, you know, this week, it's been sitting in front of a computer doing this training, and I, I'm i so sore. Oh, dear. But you've been learning a lot, I guess. I've been learning a lot, but I could do without the sore. <laughs> this is, you know, this is just good news for the made-to-measure pattern lines, because... Soon as oh, yeah, you, and you know, tick over that uh, expertise marker, you'll be fine. Oh yeah, it's and but it's it's sad because I'm I I end up being so tired that I go to bed early and I don't I I'm too tired to wait for the bathtub to fill, so I don't even take a nice soaking bath. Wow! I just, right to bed, right to bed, up in the morning, at it again. Wow. It's been a week. I've been working. Well, that's good, though. That's good, because, you know, that that humongous backlog of pre-orders that yeah. we have. 
Yes. You'll be able to steadily work your way through those. And, you know, but. Oh, yeah. It's, it's terrific. I mean, today, one of the things I'm working on today is, is my. Uh, I gave myself homework because it's the weekend. Right. I gave myself homework so that I could make sure that I, I digested what I learned last week in the training. And then I have training again on Monday. And I thought, I'll. I'll do this with a real pattern and just check that everything works and sure. check that I understand what I learned and I remember how to do things. And uh, my instructor this morning sent me an assignment. <laughs> it's totally different. Oh, here, do this. And here's the workflow, how you do it. And uh, she's like, oh, I heard that you were going to be working with the software this weekend. So here's an assignment. I'm like, <laughs> I have I had my own thing to do already. Thanks. There's that plan, Scuppered. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll do it both. It's not a big deal. But yeah, so I'm I'm testing because I mean, yes, we we got this new pattern software and it's allowing us to do made to measure patterns. But because the made to measure patterns are based on a base size of the original pattern, right. I'm taking this opportunity to redo the original pattern Yeah. because yeah. some of our patterns, you know, some of our patterns I haven't touched since 2003. Right. And, and you've been you meaning know, to revisit them for a while now and this new tool will make it, make them that much more solid. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's a great time to, um, I did an Instagram post about testing, testing, testing. Um, which is what, what that's all about is me going back to the old patterns and taking the base size and making sure the base size works right? and then grading it with a new software and making sure larger sizes and smaller sizes also work. Right. Um, because you know, that's what it's all about. And it's kind of funny. I remember a number of years ago, and I don't know if this is the case anymore, but I remember a number of years ago, there was a pattern company, a small small pattern, historical pattern company that put on all of her advertisements, our patterns are not graded. And when you say that, that says to me, you're buying one size, but right. that's not what she sold. She sold, you know, like 10 sizes in one pattern, but she was adamant that they were not graded that each size was developed separately. Oh, okay. And I thought, well, whatever for, and I think what was happening, and I don't know this because I, I don't know the whole story. I just know the end of the story. Right. Um, what I think was happening is somebody who didn't really know what they were talking about, got it into their head that grading was bad that if you drafted a pattern in a size, that was good. But if you graded other sizes from that size, that was bad. So it kind of went around her customer base. Oh, those patterns are graded. I don't want to buy graded patterns. So she put it out there that she didn't grade her pattern. She, she drafted each single size by itself and then just nested them in the pattern. Isn't that what grading is though? Well, no, no, because when, when you, when you make a pattern, you take a set bunch of measurements and you make this pattern. And if you want to take a different bunch of measurements, you do it from the beginning again. Right. When you grade, you say, okay, this is the base size. Now the size I want to make is two inches bigger in the bust, waist and hip. And it has this many seams. So two inches divided by this many seams pi r squared yeah I, I i understand i understand but if, if yeah. you're if you're if you're sizing right if you're moving yeah. from size a which is you know let's just say thir three six two four three six yeah. and you're going to size b which is two inches up what's the difference between grading that and drafting it from scratch again there is no practical difference other than you're completely wasting your time. That's what I thought. Yeah, because it's it's math. I mean, both of them are math. Right. It's let's throw out 
the thing we just did this thing and it took us a lot of time to do let's completely discard it and start over again yeah unless unless you've arbitrarily decided that your size b is uh i don't know 38 29 37 or something which but you could do that too you see that's the thing when you're grading if you say okay the the bust goes up by two inches but the waist goes up by five inches right it's just part of the formula it's just it's just math right it, it's not even complex math it's just geometry right know? right right um and so it's you I know, thought that was a kind of camel yes it is a kind of camel and they're down the street there's three of them no those are bactrians yeah, those are back to it. Those are, those are the single-celled camels. <laughs> that you can kill with antibiotics. Lysol. I'm sp yeah. taking off a lot of Lysol. Yeah. Wow, that great. was a... Sorry. My brain is all over the place today. Dromedary. It's kind of camel. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Terry. May you, may you rest in peace. It's not Sir Terry. Isn't it? It's not Sir Terry. No, it was... It was the guy who played the Earl of Emsworth in the the Blandings. Oh, the Blandings Castle miniseries thing. Not yeah, but not was, Peter O'Toole, but the no, other one. No, no. Although he was the perfect Earl of Emsworth, may he rest well, in Peter, peace. Peter O'Toole was a terrific Earl of the, but that was a movie, the, right. the Blandings series that right. was on yep. um, a few years ago, and um, Jennifer Saunders played yes. Connie. Right. Right. I remember now. Lady Constance. And and Connie said, he has to do his geometry. I bet you don't even know what that is. And he said, yeah, Connie Camel. <laughs> oh, it was Sir Terry who wrote that geography is physics slowed down with trees stuck on it. Yes. That's right. Yes, exactly. Did you see that flash? And did you hear the thunder? I did not. Did you? You didn't see the flash. No. There was a flash, and it was not a flash. It was not flash. It oh, there's the flash. thunder. I hear it. Goodness me. Don't take a bath now. You'll get electric commuted. No. no. No, shit's getting real. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. The, the, now we, we've got the low rumbles. You know when the, the thunder turns to the ro low rumbles and the actual room That's shakes? the artillery barrage from Belgium. Yeah. They're Almost invading. Like it doesn't go out on stormy days. <laughs> anyway, so but, yes, geometry, um, <laughs> dromedaries. Um, oh god, when he, said that, when he said that, I almost spit out my tea. <laughs> I think if I had tea in my mouth, I would have spit it out. Dromedary, it's kind of camel. <laughs> um, way too amused by that. That is a spit take worthy oh. line, though. Yeah, it, it's a good one. It's a good one. Whoever wrote it, whoever wrote it is wonderful. It wasn't wood. It's not an original Woodhouse line. No, it, re, uh, it, it sounds like you know a Richard Curtis and Ben Elton line. Yeah, yeah, it probably is. Um, I don't know. I don't who, know if they. I don't know who dramatized that. I'm gonna have to look it up. No, I'll put it in the, the show notes. Um, <laughs> we put the most random shit in our show notes. I hope you all appreciate what we do for you. The, re the research that we put into... Someone who lands on the, the vlog who, you know, what are they talking about today before they watch it and they, they open the show more thing on YouTube. And it's like, types of camel... Types of camel... Who dramatized Blanding's Ooh. Castle miniseries. I saw that flash. Holy mackerel. I'm waiting for it to hit. It must be a while, miles away then by the sound of it. It must because there it is. It's, wow. it's far. It's very far away. That looks like it was going to hurt. Yeah. It came right for me to <laughs> watching it. There it goes. Yeah. But um, so explain Ooh. to me, you've done it before, but I don't remember the difference. What's the difference between a pattern and a marker? I know that patterns are for home sewing use and markers are things that are used in garment factories that look like patterns but ain't. Okay, so you've already said most of it. 
Okay. A marker file is used by a garment factory to cut fabric for production of garments. And a pattern is for home use or for use by a small manufacturer, like a, a dressmaker, a tailor, seamstress, someone who's making one garment. Okay. Now, the, the difference is, the really big difference is that the marker doesn't include information that the end user needs because nope. what like notches and stuff no it includes notches but it doesn't it doesn't include um well there are some things it includes and some things it doesn't include basically the purpose of a marker is to cut fabric as efficiently as possible so that you have as close to zero waste as you possibly can. So markers are designed with that as their main purpose, where patterns are designed with their purpose being to be useful to the sewer. Okay. I don't know if that's making any sense. You can't, and okay, from a computer point of view, right? If you have a marker file, like if, if you wanted to have a piece of clothing put into production, basically you go and have a marker maker make you a marker so that they can deliver the marker to the garment factory. And the marker is just what you have to cut. And it's graded in different sizes based on what sizes you ordered. Right. But you can't take the marker and then grade it. Okay. Because it's a different, it's a, it's a simpler type of file. Right. It's, it's the simplest type of file it can be because you don't go and necessarily, well, they used to print out the marker and put it on the fabric and cut. But now you put the marker program into your cutting machine and it comes out with like a jigsaw. Or yeah, I saw one, that stack of like printing. 70 layers of fabric. Yeah. And this band and saw cuts one, it. Yeah, and one I saw at a garment factory in New Jersey and you could not go into the same room with it. Uh, the room was sealed. It, it was like... You know, like one of those, like a radio room where it says on air with a big red right, light. Right, right. You can't go in while they're You couldn't go into this room while the cutting machine was working. Cutting machine used high pressure water. No kidding. And yeah, and if you, and, and it didn't, it didn't make the fabric wet because it moved that quickly. Wow. And if you, you got hit with the water, it would, number one, it would burn you. Right. And number two, it, it would cut your skin because it was that high pressure. Jeebus. The whole so you really, you know, the room was was completely locked and barred and you could look through the window and watch the machine work, but you couldn't go in there. And so the marker is a file that you feed into the machine and then the machine goes, okay, I'll do this. And it uses coordinates and it, you know, cuts according to those coordinates. But you, to take that marker file and make it into a pattern file, it's it's the wrong way to do it right it's you know it it's kind of you might as well go back to to step one right you know, because right. you can't have this situation where you have your base size that you created mm -hmm. and if you're going to put it into production you have a garm a, a marker made and if you're going to make a pattern from it then you turn it into a, a digitized pattern and you grade it and put all the markings on it like that. So, you know, you don't have a marker and then make a pattern out of it. Right. I see. It's two separate it's, things, it's the, two separate yeah, tools. You, you really want to go back to the origin and, yeah. um, you know, it, it'd be, it'd be supremely stupid to put uh, a marker on the market for people to use as a pattern. Hmm. Yeah, because it would it, lack it would lack a, a a bunch of 
the tool sets that home sewers have come to expect. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, but yeah it, it's just it, not it, the right it, tool for the job. Yeah, and I mean, even if you took the marker and, oh, and now I'm going to put the notches in and I'm going to do this and do that and the other thing, um, you know, put the grain lines on it and all that, all, all the stuff that the marker, that the cutting machine knows anyway, it's it's not just that. It's that you you don't grade from a marker. Right. Because, That's fair, yeah. Well, one of the big things is that the marker, because you're cutting for garments, the marker already includes the seam allowances. Right. And you don't grade a seam allowance. You grade yeah. the seam line. So if you're starting from the marker and grading from that, you're going to be starting from the wrong point. Yeah. Even and, if you assume uh, that every edge has five-eighths of an inch on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. You're, it's just going to, you know, like you could do one or two sizes and then be okay. But as you grade more and more sizes, you're going to deviate farther and farther. Right. Right. And so you're better still, off going to a, a pattern maker and taking your design and your measurement desires to the pattern maker and letting them do it because they'll take that into account. All right. Yeah. yeah. I was just, I'm just curious about that. Um, yeah, because I know I know markers exist, and I know that yeah. you know the clothing factories, garment factories use them and not patterns. But I wasn't quite sure what the difference was. Yeah, so it's it's, it's like evolution. You know, they say, oh, if if humans have evolved evolved from apes, why are there still apes? Well, no, we evolved from a different ape. We evolved yeah. from an ancestor. We have a common ancestor with chimpanzees, and so we both came from that same source. Right. Markers and patterns both come from the same source. Yeah, okay. But they've gone off in different directions. and Different legs in the trousers of time. <laughs> one of us likes bananas more than the other. <laughs> huh, really? I like... <laughs> you know, I haven't had... I haven't bought bananas since you left. Really? Naughty. Yeah. And it's good not for that you. I bananas don't like are good. It, it's not that I don't like bananas. You know I like bananas, but I don't think to buy them because yeah. they really, really hate them when they get too old. Yeah. And by too old, I mean ripe. <laughs> you like them when they're still green. I like them green. I like green bananas. It's not right. It's if you like green enchiladas. Enchiladas. Uh, and getting see? caught in the rain. Yes. And exactly. <laughs> Excuse me while I kiss this fly. Yeah. <laughs> I growing up, I honestly thought Jimi Hendrix was sing, singing Excuse Me While I Kiss This Guy. <laughs> I really did think Not that there's that. anything wrong with that. Yeah, I really did think that's what he was saying. Yeah. <laughs> that's um, funny. Um, so the, the, the software you're working with is pattern software, not marker software, and it's... No, it is... It is it or it is can do both. Industry. It is garment industry software. It will make markers. I can okay. make markers. If I wanted to put a garment into production, ah, okay. I, would just, I would create a marker rather than creating a pattern. Right, right. And, um, you know, in, in reconstructing history's history, we have used marker software. That's true. That's to, true. To produce patterns. Back but, in the day when we were doing yeah, the ready to wear, like the, the golden age of piracy stuff. Oh, but I mean, I used, I used, uh, yes, but we also used, um, I use marker software to make the patterns. Oh, yeah, it's that's just, right, yeah. And then you added the yeah. other stuff in because there, there, there was no pattern software. So you were using, I, I, I remember this now, and then you would add in things like the home sewers need those tools in like oh, Illustrator or something. You couldn't print the stuff. I mean, right. it, was, it was insane. It was... It was so fixated on the idea that you were going to send the file to a cutting machine or that you were going to print markers 
which you know prints cardboard yeah um that i couldn't get it to print to a pdf yeah and it just wouldn't work so i had to export a file and pull it into illustrator and then fix it yeah and yeah <laughs> so so now the software that we're working with now understands that there are pattern makers in the universe and that pattern <laughs> makers might want to print a pattern so um yeah but i still you know while i'm going through training every once in a while i have to remind my my trainer that i'm a pattern maker and not a marker maker right because she'll start talking and go oh and you need this if if this is a symmetrical piece you need to do this because this indicates that it's to be cut on a fold and you know and and then you need to spread it because like when you when you another thing about making markers when you make a marker and i've had people do drafts for me do grading for me before where they forgot oh um, yeah if you have a piece that's cut on the fold well a pattern maker only needs half of that piece right with a line down one side that says cut on fold but a marker maker basically you make the piece in the software and then you do something in the software that's called unfold and it, it literally puts a, a symmetrical, like a mirror image next to it. And then that piece moves as one. Right, right. Because. Because they're not cutting when, when, the, when, all the, when the stack of fabric goes into the machine, it's not folding. It's, it's not folded. It's, it's like all, sticking it's a ream all, of paper in your laser printer. Yeah, it's all laid out. So everything that is cut on a fold is unfolded. Right. When you, when you make the marker. Huh, yeah. Um, so that so that it could be laid out proper, properly yeah it's it's cutting on the fold is is a is a sewing thing it's not right, a, right. it's not a garment cutting thing so so yeah it's kind of funny the whole the whole industry is really geared to make markers so that this company is is catering to a pattern maker finally is really kind of thrilling but they do forget every once yeah. in a while and you have to go and, and then they start using words that you don't know. And you're like, what, what symmetrical piece? What does that, why, why do you care if it's a symmetrical piece or not? What could that possibly matter? And then we have oh. to, then we have to make sure the, the uh, left oriented oblique splange is properly confabulated with the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, and engineers but man the really, the really cool thing is up to this point you know i've been exporting files from from this garment making software on into illustrator and then hand arranging them in illustrator so that they'll, they'll fit on our pattern page right. you know our 36 inch wide page but now in this new software i just tell it oh my fabric is only 36 inches wide and it will put all the pieces on with all the grain the lines and everything properly oriented. That's just woof. well, I can tell it to ignore the grain lines. So oh, I see. Get everything right, so you can in yeah jigger. It yeah, yeah. I mean, the grain lines will be on the pattern pieces, but you right. can rotate them any way you want to to get everything to lay out right. And then you so just have to worry. Of, then you have to worry about doing the proposed layouts, which is always yeah. fun. Oh yeah. But the uh, but just that that alone that I don't have to sit there. Oh, you've spent hours. And I remember I remember that, ladies and gentlemen, if, if you didn't know it, if you don't know Cass, let me just remind you how badly how how badly she can cuss when she gets frustrated. <laughs> and there have been times when she's trying to do these get make it all fit on as little paper as possible, and because you were using illustrator you had to group all those separate lines some of them and some you, of the stuff and you, yeah, we're, we're talking a long time ago we're talking yeah, a long time ago it it didn't export well and you, you would try and, and group all these lines grab all these lines and move them and there'd be one or two that that you missed and you wouldn't notice it i remember there was one time you had me test print one and there were like two lines that were that didn't move, and we didn't. Neither one of us caught it until it got to the test print stage. And ladies and gentlemen, you should have heard the cacophonous din of like the the very air itself was blue. And 
the it's... dogs ran and hid under the bed. And these are greyhounds. <laughs> the dogs, so the, the, dogs the bed was that. two foot in the air. The, the dogs do hide when I start. Um, oh, it was almost yeah, as entertaining it's... as when you sewed that sleeve inside out seven times in a row. That was entertainment. And that was my, my fault, my flaws and mistakes. No, but the thing, I mean, the thing that really frustrates me, having done graphic design, you know, 10 years, for 10 years before I became a pattern drafter, I worked in graphic design and I, Illustrator and Photoshop and InDesign and Quark and, and these programs every single day of my life. And you get used to them. And that makes sense to you. This is how you manipulate objects in on a computer and then you learn autocad and <laughs> artists and engineers are not the same people at no. all and the, i swear the, to god from what you d used to describe from how you used to describe autocad to me the user was never a consideration like the engineers who came up with it the, the autocad the company it never occurred to these engineers to actually involve a user somewhere in their development cycle well it's it's it comes from a different tradition i mean when when you're an illustrator adobe illustrator is for people who are illustrators and when you're an illustrator you sit down at your desk with your piece of paper and your pencils and you draw but when you are a a, a drafter a technical drafter you sit down at your desk with your piece of paper, m most likely graph paper. And your pencils. And your pencils with your T-square and your, you know. Yeah. All these different drafting tools. And it's different. And what, what AutoCAD does is it uses a coordinate system. So in Illustrator, you just take, you just click on a point and that's, that's where you start. And you click on a point and you draw a circle and your circles circles around that point. But in AutoCAD, you have to tell it, okay, start this point at one inch up and three inches over, and then make a circle with radius 0.4 inches. Right. And then, you know, if you want it to grow this way, it has, it's one coordinate. A different set of coordinates, yeah, different set on the X, Y axis. I mean, to be fair, Photoshop. I'm not that. I'm not as familiar with Illustrator, but I know Photoshop has coordinates. You can watch the coordinates go oh, when yeah, you're absolutely. moving around on the, the the canvas. The frustrating thing about AutoCAD, and then the frustrating thing about going and using something else once you've used AutoCAD a lot, is that what the version of AutoCAD I had. I had AutoCAD 2000, which still was largely coordinate based. So you were typing into a command line to tell it where to put things. Wow. And, and Would you, you like know, to play a game? Yeah, right. And later versions of AutoCAD, you could do it with a mouse, but it still made more sense to do it typing in the coordinates somewhere because it was more precise. So right. the, the thing about, about AutoCAD is that I can make a, a shape that is very precise where in illustrator i'm eyeballing it mm, okay and so all pattern software is it rides on a cad base yeah kind of has to because it uses this coordinate system and so you know i mean you could do stuff you do in autocad and how i used to grade in autocad before i had pattern software was you could make a line that is exactly this distance away from the previous line and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat so you you know basically you say i want to go a quarter inch away from this line and then basically you've just graded the side of your pattern right that line at and, least yeah yeah and in and then you do the bottom and then in autocad you can say make this make this line meet that line. So you can make that line grow right. until it is that line and then stop. Right. Yeah. Which, so the objects aren't, they're not discrete. It's not, this is a line and that's a line. It's, this is an object. Right. So when you move the object, 
you, you know, you click on one point and you can move the whole thing, which is very convenient. Yeah. But when it imports into Illustrator, Illustrator kind of freaks out a little bit. And sometimes it keeps some of the objects together and other uh, other parts of the same object aren't there. And it just so decides, know, yeah. It just decides. And that's why, I, and I see this every single day. You know, now that I'm printing and folding the patterns, I see it every single day and I'm just like, oh my God, why did no one tell me that, you know, I have the, um, the top, like the arrowhead for the grain lines. Yeah. The arrowhead will be on a different part of the pattern. <laughs> Nice. Because and I I don't notice I it went, either. I went to move it and I didn't move I moved I moved enough of it. Yeah. Apparently. But it didn't I group. moved the whole thing or one little dash. That's on a different thing. layer. Yeah. That's on a totally yeah. different layer. And and I don't see it because, you know, this is a thirty six inch wide by fifty inch long piece of paper and I'm seeing it on a screen like this. Yeah that you know i don't see anything around it so the one of the really great things you know my my personal sense of fastidiousness is offended every time i fold a pattern and there's a bit on it that isn't supposed to be there or you know sometimes the um i had the the sizes in a certain font and they line up perfectly yep. because the sizes are the sizes are always something i put in over the top right of of the layer because they're not they're not you know the the pattern doesn't i mean the the software that i've used to this point never understood these size sizes yeah. need to be there um because in a marker you don't need that it's one size you know and it'll say in the middle size m you know so the software doesn't care about sizes so i put those letters in you know on a different layer they're they're just sitting on top right and because they're just sitting on top they don't move with the rest of it right and the other problem is that you know some of these patterns i drafted originally in 2003 and i can't tell you how many computers i've had since then <laughs> not a bunch not to mention, yeah not to mention how many different pieces of software I've had since then. And sometimes, um, you know, when you make a PDF of something, you think everything is, you know, fixed in amber, right? but it's not necessarily. And some of them, I used a strange font. Oh yeah. I didn't know it was strange at the time. At the time I used, you know, the system font. Right. And if, the version that I'm using now doesn't recognize the font. It changes it to something like some Calibri other system font. Yeah. I was, just, I was just going to say that you know, even if you were using illustrator from then until now, that's a while. Illustrator has yeah, gone through a number of iterations since then. Yeah. And it's, it's, and it's not illustrator. It's, it's, you know, five different programs before I started using illustrator and so the font changes and you go, oh, well, the font changed, but it's the same point size. It's not. Mm -hmm. And also because of how I space it, it's so primitive. And so it so offends me as a graphic designer that sometimes in order to get it to line up in the right place, I have to put extra spaces between the Oof. letters, which is aggravating. You know, you should be able to just kern, yeah. and, but you can't kern and because there's no kerning yeah so to get the spacing right i had to do something artificial and then when the font changes everything changes and i just i printed a pattern this morning that i don't know where the size i don't it's i'm they weren't even close they were just like they were wow. they were in the middle of the piece and why does no one call me why does no one drop me an email and go what the what the hell is this? What is this? This looks like hell. And I'm embarrassed. But, you know, now I'm going to go through 377 freaking patterns and fix everything because, you know, I was bored. I had I had, I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> I should have started this 
I should have started this this time last year when lockdown happens, and then you know I would be done by now. I yeah, still would yeah. be done by now. Three hundred and seventy-seven patterns. If I did one pattern a day, I wouldn't be done in a year. Yeah. Oh my God! What have I done? You have opened the proverbial can of worms, my love. Oh, what have I done? Well, you know, you'll get there eventually. Uh huh. <laughs> just in time for There's the software gonna... to change again, and you have to start all over. <laughs> There's gonna have to be. There's gonna have to be gin. Luckily, you live in the Netherlands. Yeah. It's re really rather famous for it. Yeah. There's actually little a brand called glasses. Dutch Courage. Little tiny glasses. <laughs> Geneva. Oh my God. I'm I'm exhausted just thinking about it. That just occurred to me. Oh dear. Oh, what am I doing? Well, yeah. friends. <laughs> yeah, so that's a good place to wrap up because Cass has to get back to work. <laughs> I'm gonna go take a nap and hide <laughs> my head. And... Fortify yourself for the coming ordeal. Oh my God! But yes. Yeah, yeah. So see what I do for you. See what I do for you. I give up my life. <laughs> no, oh. it's uh, it's all for a better product, and it's, yeah. it's it's a great investment in both the tool and the skills you're learning, along with you know how to use the tool is going to make it so. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're going to look at a bunch of your your older stuff. And mm -hmm. it'd be like, oh yeah, that's fine. Shoop. Oh yeah, and there was stuff. There was some stuff I was looking at this morning because it's a Saturday, but I'm I'm printing and shipping orders. Um, and there was stuff I looked at this morning, and I went, oh, I'm not going to have to do anything. There's there's like one pattern I folded this morning that is from the original batch of patterns that mm -hmm. we did back in October of 2003, and I looked at it and went. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Perfect. Yeah, like 104 or something. 201, 101. Oh, yeah. 101, I look at and go, I don't know how I nailed it. That is, that is, it's the first female pattern I did. Right. And I look at it and go, that, you know, 18 years later, that's still good. That's still really well done. Beginner's luck. And, yep, and I'm gonna I'm gonna test it, and I'm going to re regrade it and everything just to do it. But I look at it and go, really? Yeah. If I had if I had to skip one, that'd be one of the ones I skip. Mm -hmm. um, but let me do a little. I want to do a little commercial for Made to Measure. Oh because yeah, sure. There's something, there's something that occurred to me the other day, and I don't think it's occurred to anyone else because you know we did this whole thing with pre-orders and people have been giving me what they want for pre-orders and they've been telling me about their fitting issues and mm -hmm. they're very tall people or they're short-waisted or they have big bust and small back and you know all this, these kind of issues and um there's one thing that no one's brought up and i'm really surprised children oh yeah no one has mentioned children because we have always gotten feedback from people. Oh, I wish you made children's patterns. Or when we put out their, uh, what should we do next? We get people saying, I'd really love if you did children's patterns. And I don't have children. I, I'm not around children. I don't, have, I don't have brothers and sisters who have children, neither do you. Nope. So I, I'm kind of like, I don't want to have to rent a six-year-old, you know, to, to try patterns on them. Um, yeah, the oldest children we know are, you know, driving cars and drinking beer. Yeah. yeah. The oldest children we know are technically adults. And um, so one of the things that the Made to Measure software will allow me to do is if you want to make, for example, say a tutor gown for a child, give me the child's measurements. Because I'm not doing, now there are companies out there who say they're doing made to measure. There are companies out there saying that, you know, you give us this amount of money and we will make a pattern to your measurements. 
but basically they take three measurements. They, there were four measurements. They take your bust, your waist, and your hips and your arm. And they only work for people who are between 5'3 and 5'7. Mm. So they're not even doing a change in back waist. Where with our software, if you give me a child sizes, and it's good to know for you to tell me this is a child so yeah. that I, I know we haven't gone insane. Um, but you give me a child size and part of the sizing, part of the measurements I'm going to ask you for are back waist length, front waist length, mm -hmm. and shoulder to floor. So you can do that with one of our patterns and it will make the size for the child. Now, anything that deviates wildly from the base size is going to be a little weird. Right. I haven't done it yet. But I'd like to do it. Theoretically, it should be possible. I mean, it's just, it, as you say, it's math. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be fine for, like, tweens. Right. I worry about it. You know, if you want to make something for a three-year-old, mm. it, it might get iffy. But, you know, and, um, but yeah, so, so there's, the, you know, the potential. Or, you know, I think of um, our friend Catherine. Oh, yes, from, yeah. Um, from the Bristol, uh, right? Bristol Ren Fair. Yeah. <laughs> like from, from Renaissance Fair in Wisconsin, what's it called? Bristol Ren Fair. Our friend Catherine is a little person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she, of course, she has everything custom, all her outfits custom for her. But she I always would looks be fabulous, able to, too. Absolutely. I, she's, I wish I had her email. I'd be like, Catherine, what a dress. Right. <laughs> Catherine, if you're listening, call me. Call, email me. Email me. Um, message me on Facebook. Um, because yeah, because I could I could easily put in her measurements and make a pattern that would fit her measurements. Sure, sure. And you know, and it, it doesn't matter that it's not, um, it's not a a the usual progression. Right. Let's say the usual usual progression of measurements um so yeah so i'm i mean i'm just in love with the whole idea i'm I really imagine, in love yeah. with the idea and i cannot wait to start hearing from people that things are working out for them because i mean it's not going to solve everyone's problems because like i said i have one one shoulder that's higher than the other yeah the pattern isn't going to know that I have sloped shoulders rather than square shoulders. The pattern isn't going to know that. Yeah. But I think the point that I think that the, if, if you can, if you can boil that down into a sentence, patterns are designed to get you close mm -hmm. and the made to measure patterns are going to get you a hell of a lot closer. Yeah. I mean, really, unless you You're have, still going to have to fit. Yeah. Unless you have a major issue for example you have scoliosis mm. and you're you're very twisted and if you do contact me because then i'll make the two sides of the pattern different um but you know pretty much what i'm i'm almost afraid to say this i'm almost afraid to say this but i'm gonna say it pretty much a made to measure pattern should get you so close that you can tweak it in the garment mm. Rather than making a... Rather than making a muslin. Yeah. I mean, I always think it's a good idea to make a muslin the first time you make any pattern. Right. But um, this really has the potential of skipping the muslin phase wow. because it's, it should get you close enough Yeah. that you don't have to do the muslin part. You can go right to the good fabric. But I mean, I have... I'm, I'd still be terrified to do it. I, I I never go to the good fabric, you know. Even even a pattern that I've used sixteen thousand times, I always go. I like that extremely dangerous yeah. website you you showed me the other day with the reproduction oh, fabrics that I'm not allowed more. to look at even anymore because I'm. Oh, you you know what I didn't send you? I got the new price list from M Perkins. You're making the 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 
This is not a high enough definition camera for you to see my eyebrow twitching, I don't think. <laughs> but yeah. I'll put I'll put links to Sartor in the Czech Republic <laughs> and M. Perkins in the show notes because uh, oh my god, just gloriousness. Uh, but you know, I mean as soon as this uh once this software becomes automated, which is the hope that by the end of 2021, it will have an automated process and you'll be able to type in your measurements and get your perfect pattern without me having to intervene. And then I'm going to make stuff because you're going to have I all kinds been, of time on your hands. I where the hope is. I haven't made anything in a very, very long time. Yeah, you've well, you've been having things made. Yes, but, but I mean, I haven't, I haven't made myself any any historical. I mean, I've had, I've had clothing made, but I haven't done anything historical since. Well, yeah, that, that depends well, what yeah. you mean by historical. The the oh. the things like your knickerbockers and your jodfers and your coats and all of that. That's it's certainly yeah, historical. They're, they're, it's all historical because all time is history. You know? But it's not like, you know, we're making 17th century stuff that we can wear when Tim and Sharon come over and Mike Tartaglio yeah. and all of them and the bag. I mean, I haven't, I haven't made any steampunk stuff since the last time I went to uh, Anime USA. Right. The last time I spoke at Anime USA, which was what, 2015? I think so, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I haven't made anything I since we were in, we when I made the Killery coat when we came back from Ireland in sixteen. Yeah. yeah, you made you made two thousand sixteen. Yeah. Anyway, we went in two thousand sixteen and two thousand seventeen. I think it was seventeen. I came back and made the Killery out of that gray Melton. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, and I mean, you wear that as a you wear that as a winter coat. I wear that to it shovel is, snow. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but I'm telling you, I'm making myself the reefer when I get back, mainly I, because I, my pea coat that I brought with me is shot, mm -hmm. so it's probably going to go in the skip before I even come back this spring, okay. and I'll. You know, scavenge the buttons from it, but I'm gonna need to make a new winter coat. So the reefer is gonna get. We're gonna have to get some fabric, and I'll make a reefer. No, that's cool because I really want to do some YouTube videos of sewing techniques, tailoring techniques. Yeah, that, and, that'd be fine. That'd be fun. Um, I could, I could teach them to you, and yeah. you could do them, or I could do a reefer, whichever way you want. No, you do, um, if you teach them to yeah. me, then, you know, A, I'll know them, and B, it'll be like having a demonstrator when you're teaching any other technique in a YouTube video. Yeah, cool. Because you'll remember things. Your hands remember, your hands as a skilled person will remember how to do things that your, your, your brain, it won't even occur to your brain to mention them. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But if you're trying to teach someone how to do a thing, then and they do it wrong because there's this little fiddly bit that you do automatically and they don't know then you have to mention the fiddly yep. bit you know yep yep that's a good point that's a that's thing a really that uh that's a thing that um i learned from dr brennan at mansfield about you know teaching advanced percussion techniques there's things that we that i know how to do with a stick or mallet that my brain just does until oh, try yeah. until you're trying to teach a student how to do it, then you're like, oh yeah, here's this mm -hmm. the way the pinky does that one little thing, you know, and you have anyway. Say, I'm sure the principle holds. Yeah. It is a pedagogical yeah. principle. I uh, I found that out when I was teaching belly dance to adults at a, a adult school night in yeah. New Jersey, years a couple decades ago, and you're teaching non-dancers how to dance. Yeah. And you have to realize that they've never had a dance class. You have yep. to assume they've never had a dance class. So what do you, where do you start? You know? Oh yeah. Which we, we, you and I experienced that together when we were learning how to dance the minuet. When we first started doing things, you're like, okay, plie here, releve there. And I'm like, uh, what? Yeah. 
just a familiarity with the terms. You know, what, what, plie? The hell does yeah. that mean? Plie. <laughs> yeah. Um, or going to fifth position, then plie. And I'm, what the hell are you talking about? And you were like, oh. <laughs> yeah. There are these terms of arts that um, are second nature in these pursuits that, you know, they're, they're, they're so second nature they become jargon. Yeah. Because what is jargon yeah. but a shorthand amongst the cognoscenti? Well, yeah, I mean, exactly. It's, it's so much easier to say, you know, tondu than to say, okay, point your toe really hard and touch it to <laughs> right. this space on the floor that is equidistant yeah. from, you know. And it's, it's short. It's but short that's hands. what you teaching me how to do these things will do. Awesome. Well, that's what we're going to do then. All right. So All right. keep an eye out for YouTube videos of Bob making stuff. And if you've seen, if you've seen our blogs of Bob making stuff, you know they'll be hysterical. I don't know about hysterical because in the blogs I could Photoshop a finger being cut off, but I'm not sure I want to do that live streamed on YouTube or Twitch. It was never the finger being cut off. It was the you chopping up your coif and it only fit the dog's head. See, there you go. Easing. No one ever told me about that. <laughs> or walking. Walking. No one ever told me about that. And it's it wasn't in the pattern. Yep. It's just assumed you know about yep. fabric walking. And that's a thing. Yeah. It takes yeah, a derp so. moment from a complete noob to... Uh, to, to spot these things. So anyhow, that'll wrap and it I for. You, gave, you right. gave people a lot of confidence by the fact that you know you screwed up your coin. <laughs> it fit the dog. Oh, Sebastian <laughs> of blessed memory. Yeah. The only the dog, dog we've ever, the only greyhound we've ever owned who enjoyed wearing hats. Yes. Insert picture of Sebastian in pirate hat here. Oh yes, please. Oh. <laughs> I know exactly where it is. So I know exactly where it is. That'll wrap it for this week, ladies and gents. Thank you for sitting with us while we blither about these exciting new things. We think they're exciting. You're probably like, okay. Um, anyway, thank you for hanging out with us. And uh, if you're catching this on YouTube, you know what I'm going to say next. I'm going to say ring the little bell down there. Ring the little bell for notifications. Like, subscribe, comment. If you have something you want to hear us talk about or you want to tell us we're full of shit, whatever, give us a comment there on the YouTubes. Um, same thing on your podcast streaming provider. Give us a rating and review if you like. I'd appreciate that. And, um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else. You can subscribe to our e-newsletter. That is, There's a link to that in the front page of our website, which is also linked down in the doobly-doo. Um, that will get you subscribed to our electronic newsletter. We will not spam you. We will not sell your email address. The most we'll do is send you coupon codes periodically and informative newsletters to let you know what we're up to, what we're working on next. I think that's about it. Yeah, and you know, speaking of these, these uh, instructional YouTube videos that I want to do, if any of you have any thoughts on what techniques you'd like me to demonstrate or possibly what things in a pattern that you don't understand or that you have trouble with yeah. or that you want me to make clearer, give me some ideas because I mean, I, I'm going to go through and do everything I can think of. Yeah. But yeah. You might think of something that I don't. So, I think that's a great yeah. idea. Oh, oh, oh. Can I plug my Indiegogo? Go ahead. Okay. Many of you may or may not know that uh, as my side gig is writing stuff for tabletop role-playing games. And uh, we have developed a new game, totally new, that is a very lightweight, rules lightweight, um, fast, simple, easy fantasy role-playing game. We're calling it Spears and Spells to differentiate it from that game that has the dragons and or dungeons. Though it is similar. But you can find another link down in a doobly-doo that goes to the project page on, for Indi, our Indiegogo. It's going to be starting, well, by the time you see this, it might already be going on. So that link will actually send you to the crowdfunding campaign for it. 
But if not, you'll go to the project page, which will allow you to sign up for e-notifications of when the campaign goes live, and you'll be helping us out a whole lot to do things like funding editors and more writing, adventure writing to go with the game, that sort of thing, and uh, layout art, all that stuff. Um, will be funded by the Indiegogo. So that link is down there. I would really, really appreciate it if you'd give me a hand. That's it. Awesome. But so, yeah, that'll wrap it for this week's podcast. And uh, I think all that's left is for us to wave and smile and say goodbye. <laughs>